Hello, this is Dr. Stephanie, the founder of Your Healing Place, the author from Panic to Empowerment books, and I am coming to you from the comfort zone, the virtual experience of Your Healing Place, now which is home, um, to do another video that I would share with a girl's night out. And the topic of discussion is about the secrets in your hair. Yeah, yeah, your, your hair holds secrets. And if any of you may be wondering why I always wear head wraps, I would say number one, because I like them. And number two, because I'm going through my gray journey. If you watched any other videos of me over the past several years, you'll notice that my hair has gradually turned from brown to red to gray. The red was the henna. And as it transitioned out, it was crazy. And so I covered it up to allow the transitional phase to happen without you seeing it. One of these days, I will let you see what my gray hair looks like. It's actually all gray. I'm actually loving it. But right now, I have little twists. And I'm not quite sure how I feel about doing videos with my little twists because I'm not that great with makeup. And I think when you have phenomenal gray hair, what makes it pop is this awesome makeup and your eyes and how they pop. So I am not a makeup artist and I can't give you any tutorials about how to match gray hair and eyeshadow and how to make it work. I'm just grateful to have hair, y'all, be honest. And so today's uh, topic is about the secrets in your hair, but of course, from a wellness perspective. Now, there's some interesting facts about hair that you may not know. Hair turns prematurely gray when there is a copper imbalance. So if you have someone who starts to gray when they're 14, that's a copper imbalance. And a lot of people might say, you know what? My grandmother had it, my aunt had it, it's genetic. Well, we had a conversation before about genetics and things happening to the body. So let's look at a possibility of why you would have a generation, three generations of young or gray and young. Is it possible that if your family is used to having a diet that's void of copper rich foods, then in utero, when a mother is incubating life, if she's not getting enough copper in her system, then the baby's going to be deficient too. And then if she feeds the child the way she's eaten, that is an example of a diet that's void of the necessary copper, then that child will start to gray early as well. And it can be a generational experience, but not necessarily from a DNA. And that's called epigenetics, above genetics. So back to the secrets in your hair. That's one secret. The secret, another secret of hair is the braiding patterns for hair of people of color, the style of braids in the past were actually roadmaps. Can you imagine? And so when you see all of these wonderful patterns and styles of braids and corn rolls, the origin of it was a way to communicate directionality of how to be free. Isn't that amazing? So those are two phenomenal secrets in your hair. So one is graying early is about nutrition and the patterns of braids is about a navigation. So amazing. But what I'd like to talk to you today about hair, the secrets in your hair, is what you can find in your hair follicle that will give you clues to how you can be well. So for instance, instead of using blood as an assessment tool, as a natural wellness coach, I want to know how you're doing biochemically. I want to know what your nutritional values are. In another video, we talked about the potential of um, a sodium and copper and calcium and iron creating emotional problems. But how do we get that information? We get that information through hair tissue analysis testing. And that is the type of assessment that I do to help clients understand their health from a nutritional perspective and also from their emotions. So I never guess, I'm not telling you anything that I haven't 
uh, done from an assessment perspective because anybody and everybody has an opinion about what's good for you, what's not good for you, but until you get a definitive test that shows what your biochemistry readout is going to bear in relationship to how you absorb and assimilate and metabolize nutrients, we're all guessing. And I don't like to guess. I like to get it in, get it done, get it right correctly. Then there's no better information than getting an assessment directly from your body's resource. So how does the hair tell you anything? Well, I have a plant right here. I love orchids. I'm a, I'm, I love plants. I have a lot of plants. And so the orchids, this has roots and the roots actually grow outside of the pot. Um, these are already dried out, but that's an example. But if the orchid's roots um, were in, let's say, a jar of water, I should have got a better example. I do have some water plants with some pathos that has roots in it. But what if I were to put a blue dye in the water that the pathos is growing? Then potentially what you might see would be blue leaves. And the leaves would be blue because the roots would be soaking up the blue water and what comes through the root is what is seen in the leaves. Same thing with your hair. Your hair follicle while it's inside your skin is bathed in the interstitial fluid of the cell just under the, the, the dermal and the epidermal, well, the epidermal and the dermal layer. And what happens is as the hair follicle is bathed in those uh, biochemical soups, for lack of better words, as it grows, the hair follicle itself closes over that information. So when I send hair to the lab, all the lab does is just open up the hair follicles and see what's there. The secret of that is what's ever there, whatever the report bears, it's at least six months worth of information. So that's how you can tell mineral imbalances or, or the ratios that are off, which will create specific health concerns. So a lot of times your allergies is not necessarily a, a expression of you having an allergic reaction to a food or you having pollen causing you sneeze. That could be a copper imbalance. And also, when you have a gastrointestinal experience or other allergies, that can be sodium-potassium ratios that are off. Sodium-potassium ratios can also make you depressed, low energy, low mood. And so the hair tissue analysis does more than just assess your level of nutritional stores or toxicities, but it also says whatever your imbalances are, these are the potential emotional effects it would have on you. And so that report is so amazing because we're able to like check it out. Like who doesn't want to know the secrets of their health that can be in their hair? This technology is so amazing because it's really a tissue sample. And you know, there are other tissues. There's bone tissue, there's muscle tissue, there's blood. Blood is also in a tissue. Now blood being an assessment tool may or may not always be as effective to finding out certain types of information. So for instance, if you had a child who was suffering from, you know, being all over the place. My son, before ADD had a name, I think my son was ADD. <laughs> he couldn't focus, he couldn't pay attention, his grades needed support, you know, there was tutors and everything. And I am not sure if they ever did a blood, oh yeah, a blood test for lead was done, my apologies. And it showed that my son had significantly high lead levels. Well, nobody told me what to do about it, so I just did what every mom does. I work within the parameters of my child's challenge. And so he had anger management and sports to, you know, get out his aggression. We had tutors. We did hooked on phonics, AI, apples. Anybody remember that? I'm really dating myself. Um, we did everything we could to support his learning ability. But one of the things that I come to find out is subsequent blood tests that my son had, lead didn't show. So it was easier for someone to label him as being slow or have cognitive problems or even wanting to give him medication to calm him down. Now, when you're exposed to lead and it's not continuous exposure, 
guess what happens? The lead hides. It goes into your bone and in your brain. And that's why the child or whoever has lead will act a little loopy. And one of the things that I noticed that my son would do, he would complain that his joints hurt. And every time I took him to the doctor, the doctor would say, oh, he's got growing pains, he'll get over it. Well, he never did. And so when he was in college and he was playing college football, his injuries would always be in his connective tissue. Now, if you know anything about connective tissue, your connective tissue, which is your muscles and your tendons, attaches to the bone. And if your bones are strong, the connective tissue will hold on. But I noticed something really interesting. My son would always get hamstring tears and strains and sprains and they would rarely heal. So a really great athlete would be out of the game for weeks and he was like, mom, what am I gonna do about this? And I said, you know what? Let me just te test the hair tissue analysis and see what's happening. Well, when I did the hair tissue analysis, 20 years later, my son did have lead in his system. And lead was the cause of his body not being able to heal properly. It was having an effect on his cognition. It was having his, an effect on every aspect of his life. And in my family, we get, got so used to my son being a little, you know, different. We just call whatever he said a kevism. And we used to just laugh about it. But the reality is, it was... It wasn't until I did the hair tissue analysis that I was able to see not only the toxic elements in my son's system, but also the fact that he was not absorbing his nutritional elements either. Now, being a consummate athlete, he's been playing a sport since he was nine years old. So by the time he got to college, his body was well adept at, 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 at actin and myosin fibers, um, you know, his telomeres were working as best as they could. You know, he had a nine pack we used to laugh about. I mean, his whole body on the outside looked phenomenal. But on the inside, the telltale sign was injuries that weren't able to repair. So getting a hair tissue analysis can show you so much about your health and actually gives you um, information on how you can do better. Your hair tissue analysis report will also tell you which nutrients or which foods you should eat. Now, it cracks me up every time I look at a hair tissue analysis because when I see that a client has low thyroid function or high thyroid function and the diet is different from what a person would think, they go, well, I thought that kale was good for me. Well, remember in the previous videos I told you when you eat food, your body's job is to extract the nutrients out of the food to use them for utilization. Now. If you have low thyroid function, that has an indication that a several different things are happening. Number one, you could potentially have a viral load that you're not aware of. Number two, it's an indication that your body is getting more calcium than or carbohydrates than protein. And if your body is getting more carbohydrates than protein, then it causes the body's metabolic system to slow down and you start to store calcium. So Storing calcium is like chalk being deposited in the body and chalk is very drying and it's a very cool element. Calcium is a cool down element. And so you would notice cold hands, cold feet, ridges on your fingernails. You might notice teeth marks on the edge of your tongue. Uh, what else would you notice? If you were a woman and you're cycling, you would have really heavy cycles. Those are all indicators that the body's metabolic system, the thyroid gland has slowed down. The last thing you want to consume is a kale smoothie. Why? Because green leafies have a lot of calcium and your body is already saying, I have enough and I can't use anymore. So don't give me any more because it's already being stored. I just need to utilize what I have. So that's one secret that's found in the hair. Through a hair tissue analysis, it gives you not only your mineral breakdown, it also tells you what foods that you shouldn't be eating. Now, when I have a client that says, well, Dr. Reed, I have a pretty good diet and I have this and I take that and I take this and I go, well, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel horrible. <laughs> That's an indication that your diet is not good for you, regardless of what you think in your head. So remember, natural medicine is about spirit, mind and body. You have the capacity to be the observer of your existence and when you eat something you say hmm 
I know they say kale smoothies and all those green leafies are doing good, but they ain't working for me. What's the disconnect? Well, you might not always know what the disconnect is, but just acknowledging that there is one is the start because that will start you looking for someone who can give you some answers. And a hair tissue analysis can definitely give you some answers because it gives you a diet for your metabolic profile. So, you know, I love kale. And right now my, my hair tissue analysis, my most recent one as of two weeks ago, indicated that my thyroid function is sped up. And so on a, on a high thyroid function, which is usually due to stress, emotional or physical, in my case, it was emotional stress. Eating kale and green leafies are a good idea because it has a tendency to slow things down some. When you have high thyroid function for long periods of time, you might notice oily skin. You may notice your cycles are very light. You might notice you have the itch factor minus the B, right? People like to say, why are you acting like that? It could be high thyroid function. You might notice that your heart is rating, racing for no reason. And you might also notice that um, you feel hot. You know, the first thing somebody was gone, gone through menopause, very menopause, maybe, but maybe not. If you're 25 and you're having feeling hot all the time, but your life is all over the place, then potentially it's just a response of your thyroid gland to the level of stress that you're experiencing. And so these are the wonderful secrets that are found in your hair. I mean, just like hair. So what happens is we send hair to the lab. The lab sends a report. You and I discuss it through a Zoom, a Zoom, a Zoom, a Zoom uh, consult, and then we unravel the mystery of your health as it relates to your nutrition. Because remember, everything about your health is predicated on nutrition, what you bring into your body, but also how your body utilizes it or doesn't utilize what's there and what toxic elements could be creating a barrier between you using the nutrients that you're getting and they're just st st being stored and creating a problem. So they can cause an emotional problem and a physical problem. Because remember, you are a spirit, a mind, and a body. And if you don't address all aspects of who you are, you're going to leave a healing potential on the table. So if you really want to be well and your wellness journey is on your radar now that we're in this new wow, I call it the new wow, then I really recommend that you get a hair tissue analysis. Now I'm sitting here wondering, I recognize in my hair tissue analysis, I did have low copper function, or not copper function, I had low copper, it's like my copper just wasn't enough. So either I'm not getting it in my diet and or I'm not, um, um, not absorbing what I'm getting because of my gastrointestinal stuff going on. And now that I'm taking copper, I wonder if some black would come back in my hair. Hmm. Well, there is a research that says if you do supplement your diet with copper and eat copper rich foods, you can see the pigment return in your hair. Just like if you are balding because you have copper, high copper can cause alopecia or hair loss. And if you supplement or chelate what's too much, then you can not only get your gray hair pigment to be black again if you choose to, or you can also have your hair start to grow. So what's in your hair? So many secrets. But everybody's secret is different and in order to find out what secret is hidden in your hair that's going to bring your wellness journey to the next level, I suggest you look at the comments below and there's some information about hair tissue analysis. And from there you'll be able to figure out, with support hopefully, your next course of action in your wellness journey. So I hope this video 